What up, YouTubers? This is your boy, Big Metroid Fan 12, coming to you with another video game review. And I am reviewing the game Captain Planet and the Planet Tears for the NES by Mindscape. And there's two other versions of Captain Planet that's on the Amiga and ZX Spectrum. For the sake of this video, I am going to review the NES version because the other two versions are different than, it, than the NES version and the games which include the NES version are based on the cartoon series Captain Planet and the Planet Tears that came out in the 90's and it had, had a five year run and as far as the cartoon version is concerned it it was mediocre at best. It's safe to say that. And the plot of the NES version is that Hoggish is making, um, is attempting to drill for oil in different spots in, on the planet. And Gaia is calling for, calling the planeteers to put a stop to him drilling trying to make an attempt to drift for oil and the in the in the game pretty much has like five stages in it that that's um divided into two sections on each stage. In the first section of each uh, stage it, there's a five section where somebody from a planet where all five planeteers are in this are in the vehicle while the second stage has um, you controlling Captain Planet. Like, while you're taking control of the vehicle, whatever vehicle you have in each stage, you pretty much like use as a weapon one of the elements, whether it's like earth, wind, fire, water, and heart. And uh, I know, like in the first stage, if you press B, you, 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 your vehicle pretty much change direction. It's kind of like I don't know, I don't know why the programmers would do that for. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like there was no point in it of uh, them even doing that. They could have had it like had a vehicle like speed up or have like a like a secondary weapon or something, but no. The programmer decided that the B button could be used for um, changing the vehicle in the other direction, which was uh, quite honestly a bad programming decision. And then on the second section uh, of each stage, you're pretty much controlling Captain Planet, where the um, where you can you, where you can use one of the elements as a pop as a power up, not not technically a power up. You press the you put you use the uh, B button for punching the A button for uh, one of the elements that is in that is in use at the time, whether it be like earth, fire, whatever the case. And the only characters from the from a cartoon series that you that you, that's in the game are Captain Planet, Gaia, the uh, the Planeteers, and Hoggish. But I do have a question though: Why is it that the Captain Planet theme is missing from this game? I mean, anybody who who watched the show a few times, whether it be like just the first half, the first couple of seasons, or whatever would remember the um, at least the music aspect of the theme if they don't remember the um, lyrics. I mean, if you know anything about uh, cartoon shows that's been, uh, that has a video game adaptation, they pretty much have the themes in the, the um, themes in it. Like, um, I know for a fact that DuckTales for NES and the Game Boy version of DuckTales have the DuckTales team theme in it. So why don't Captain Planet have, for NES has 
the uh, cartoon theme in it really don't make any sense. You know, as far as like the graphics, and this, the graphics just is all right awful, you know what I'm saying? And they really hadn't aged since, aged well since. The fact that it, the truth of the matter is that the graphics just aged outright badly and it sucks, you know what I'm saying? And the, um, the level designs are pretty forgettable too. You know, and the gameplay, it's just, it is flat out sucks. And of course, it ain't even setting any standards by a long shot. Yeah, they, can, they just gotten lazy, you know what I'm saying? And now, like the, the um, soundtrack and everything is just outright lame, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty much, I can go as far as to say is that it's bad, generic, and outright forgettable. And I, I'm just going to go back to my question. What happened to the Captain Planet theme? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, the reason I'm asking because it couldn't have been like a um, copyright or licensing issue. I mean, like I said, DuckTales when the NES had the DuckTales theme in it, uh, the uh, uh, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 for the NES had the Ninja Turtles theme in it. So, there, uh, my thing is that there was no excuse not to have a, the theme music in it at least. <laughs> I'm guessing that either they were too lazy they didn't have enough time or they didn't have the money and the budget to put it in, put the Captain Planet theme in the game. But I also prefer the fact that they were, they were too lazy to put the theme in, you know what I'm saying. But, but all in all, Captain Planet and the Planet Tears for the NES is a outright turd fest that and I would not recommend it to nobody, and it's just not worth playing. That's how, there's no other way to put it. It's just a major turn for it that, that don't need to be played. And as far as the score is concerned, I think it's straight give it a 1 out of 10 because it's just that bad. Uh, with that being said, if you play Captain Planet and the Planeteers for the NES and you feel the same way, you can mention it in the comment section. You can also mention the Amiga version and the special version of Captain Planet 2. You can mention it if it's good, if it's bad or worse than the NES version. Now, if you like my review of Captain Planet and the Planeteers for the NES, click the, don't hesitate to click the thumbs up button. You can also share it on Facebook or Twitter or any other um, social site. And don't forget to subscribe. This is your boy, Big Metroid Fan 12, signing off.